Are you done? It does work. Can you just explain me? Yeah, <clears throat> basically, a uh, hash map internal working. So hash map uh, internal uses like a uh, hashing mechanism here. It has uh, like sixteen number of buckets basically zero to fifteen. So whenever basically uh, we are using like we create the map of hash map. So in that case, we use the put method, right? So put method have like a uh, key and value pair basically. So uh, suppose we have a, a string type of key and the value as a integer. So in that scenario, whenever you use the put, now uh, the hash code will be created for the key, and uh, like uh, hash code like uh, divided by like a number of buckets, and after that we get the index of the buckets. So in that index, we have to store our like uh, object as a key value pair basically. So it uses linked list internal and uh, there could be a collision uh, in that scenario like if we have uh, uh, if we are using again put method and add, adding a new element in that scenario there may be a, uh, like a hash code divided by a number of buckets can be a same index again. So in that case there could be collision. So in case of collision two things happen. Suppose we have a previously added node and new added node. They have like both same key in that scenario like value can be override of the with the new value right. So in that case collision could be happen while getting data from the uh, indexes basically from node. So again we have to pass the key again hash code will be created and uh, like uh, hash code will be divided by like uh, number of buckets and we will get the index so while getting the index there could be a multiple uh, nodes so we have to compare those yeah, those each with the uh, key with the equal method basically if key is okay. found with the same then we can return the value from the hash map okay so what is the difference between collection api and stream api <coughs> collection apis and stream api okay so collection is basically a utility class so in that we have like a uh, number of utilities to like we if we want to like a uh, collection dot synchronize map collection dot synchronize list kind of things we have to do uh, sort it has little bit like uh, utilities method the same way stream also has like uh, utility methods but the like uh, uh, collection uh, basically uh, like uh, in collection sort we can have uh, uh, like uh, we also have a sort method right so we pass the list of collections and we uh, pass the comparator as well we can do so but stream has like uh, many uh, features that we can uh, do with basically so we can use like lambda functions functional interfaces okay. in stream we can convert the data basically so those are the additional functionality we can do with the stream APIs. Okay, so you have you have written uh, lambda expressions, right? right? So can you share your screen? Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I can see. Uh, just can you open your notepad? Yeah. See here. So my requirement would be I have a uh, assume like a, from database we might be getting the see. So what are the layers that you'll implement in a, a Spring Boot? You have worked right? Yes, sir. Okay. What are the layers that you'll work? Then what yeah. are the layers that you'll create? Yeah. Yeah, we have like a uh, uh, controller layer, service layer, and our layer here. So our layer okay. as consumer. Okay. So I have uh, uh, some data is there in database on table. Say suppose I assume like an employee table, right. right? So employee table in that employee table I have uh, fields like employee name, department name, and uh, employee salary. Right. Right. So here, uh, I want you to write a query. I want you to write a query to fetch the data. 
from database, right? Means I'll say suppose like uh, 10 records or uh, 20 records or whatever it is, right? Okay, so yeah, employee, employee department, employee name, okay. department name and salary. Okay. Salary, right? right? Say suppose uh, each year means uh, departments, right? I'll be having uh, uh, multiple departments and uh, some employees are belongs to same same department, right? right. So assume like yeah, AA is an employee <coughs> name. He belongs to IT. Again, BB belongs to some HR department. Again, CC belongs to again IT department. DD belongs to HR department like that. Okay. Means uh, department is uh, repeating. So employee name is a unique uh, names are there, right? Okay. So I want you to write a query. Using query, okay. I want you to fetch data from database and uh, you have to uh, populate the result means uh, in IT departments, these number of employees are there. Say suppose in IT, under IT, AA, CC is there, HR, BB, DT, or some XX. So under that finance, again, some FF, EE, yeah, yeah, HH, like it. that. You got it, right? Yeah. So, so where do you write that logic means whether you, you write the logic that uh, means uh, having that query, means uh, providing that query, whether you write in service layer or repository layer. So it's again, just you can also concentrate on uh, uh, this uh, Lombok, you can concentrate and uh, if any exceptions are, occurs, so that also you can handle here. So that is the requirement. Right. Okay? So yeah, yeah. <coughs> we can uh, write that query uh, on like, uh, basically on um, DAO layer basically so okay. uh, employee repository so like uh, if like department instead of department name I think we can take a department ID here is it okay no problem the department name only department name employee name salary department name employee name and salary but yeah. this, this uh, employee is mapped with the department right Correct. Employee, employees mapped with IT. Uh, one like, department, one department, multiple department can have multiple uh, resources, right? right? But one employee can work in only one department. Right. So in this scenario, like uh, we will have here, uh, for example, publication. So in uh, which layer? That layers also means uh, mentioning the annotations and uh, that you can clearly can yeah. okay uh, is it public? with the at the rate enable add to configurations so in properties file whatever database connections properties we are passing that will be configured automatically by using that uh, add to configuration annotations basically okay so if i have some properties are there from values are there in application.yml file all right so uh, how can we uh, read those values into java yeah, we can read that value with the like add rate value additions we have inside that we uh, inside that we have to write like uh, in literal like uh, curly with the curly braces we have to pass the key so that okay. like yeah then that value can be read. So, so have you ever uh, implemented a, a centralized exceptions? Yes. So how can you implement that? Can you just tell me one scenario where you have uh, uh, created your own uh, customized exceptions, global exceptions. Yep. <clears throat> so, for example, we have an employee service, and sometime we are passing the key for fetching the particular employee, but employee is not exist. In that scenario, we can uh, throw uh, like employee does not exist, and that exception is uh, like uh, uh, catched by 
global exceptions in that case we have like a controller and wise annotation and with that we can create a class um, like uh, custom exceptions custom global exceptions inside that we have to write another annotations like at the rate exception handler and inside that we have to write uh, runtime exception dot class and we have to create the method uh, signature like public like response entity and uh, type of error so we have to create the like uh, entity of error inside that we have to uh, like uh, two fields uh, into status code and a message so that we have to configure and in the method body we have to give like uh, employee does not exist and then we have to get that parameter e ex exceptions dot like um, message and from status code we have to pass the status code like uh, like uh, 404 so what is the uh, http error codes HTTP error code uh, like uh, employee does not exist means like we are not a uh, 404 will be sent as a like okay. a response entity. Okay, what are the what other are available? Can you explain them? Yeah, we have another like uh, 404, 4, 401. So 401 is basically like uh, if we are like uh, if we are uh, like uh, don't have any access like access like denied that that can be occurred for that and that uh, exception could be used uh, like 404 401 400 uh, we have like a bad request in that scenario whenever we are sending the parameters and those are not uh, like uh, 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 those are not like expected parameter then that is called as a bad request basically so 401 exception when you'll get 400 401 exception 401 basically like uh, whenever we are denied with the access there is no authorization in that scenario okay yeah and then we have a uh, 201 so like a uh, content created whenever we uh, use like a post request and we create the employee so once the employee is created we can return 201 so we have to do not to uh, do not three actually those like i don't remember exactly um, but okay yeah. so actually uh, while you are writing a uh, service layer repository layer you have a uh, external jp repository right? right so what is the need of implementing that uh, sorry extending that uh, which jp repository jp repository or repository all right so jp repository uh, is basically an interface that we have to extend so it has like a uh, uh, like another interfaces it has extended internally pageable uh, page repository and uh, CRUD repository basically so whenever we use a JPA uh, we extend the JPA uh, repository with our custom repositories that that uh, like all the functionality related to the CRUD API pageable then all the functionalities related to that we are available with that's why we extend the JPA repository so 